Triple murder victim planned to start big business in December. Tiona Mantle was brought to tears on Friday when she recalled how her daughter's plan of owning her business was destroyed by a gunman. Her daughter, 23-year-old Kimberly Plummer, was one of three people shot dead on August 30 on Mandela Terrace of Walton Park Road in Kingston, St. Andrew. The other two victims were identified as Derek Goodgains Jr. and Anthony Bennett. Four other people were said to have been shot and injured by gunmen traveling in a motor vehicle about 8 p.m. at a week in the community. Accounting was always Kimberly's thing. She wanted to do her own business. She was supposed to open a store for herself in December. She liked to install wigs and she said on the side she would sell the wig them and sell the cosmetics things in the store too, Mantel told reporters. Mantel shared that she gets very emotional with each memory of her daughter. Every time I try to talk to somebody about it, my breakdown. The only thing I can tell you is that candlelighting was on the road, she said. My daughter was in the lane there, a right here so the whole thing happened take place. She said, pointing to the spot. After the shooting, I ran out and see her on the ground and him said she did, the mother stated. She worked at Digiston and she had just come in from work. I left her sitting right here in the lane. It happened like five minutes after I stepped away from her, Manta shared. She said as she was walking away, her daughter said to her, Mommy, we never see when you passed me, no. I told her I saw her in the lane and I walked down there to the gate away and then I heard explosions. They said it was a van. Looking like a Prado, I didn't see the vehicle. She was 23 years old and all she did was work and come home. She worked at Flo first in the office and then she left that and took on Digicel, the mother stated. She must work from home. One day or two days out of the week, she would go into office to work. That Friday, she went to the office to work. She came home and she has a friend in the shop right there and she said she would come and stay with her. She said she wasn't going to stay on the front instead. She stayed in the lane right here on the chair. Even though she was avoiding the front, she still got caught, the mother said, describing her daughter as a brilliant young woman who was a past student of Meadowbrook High School and St. Peter's Culver Primary School. Shotgun found in open lot in Rosetown, Kingston. An illegal firearm was found and seized in an open lot along White Street in Rosetown, Kingston 13 on Thursday. The firearm, a 12 guard shotgun, was discovered during a raid carried out by members of the Kingston Western Police Proactive Investigations Unit. Reports indicated that between 11.30 and 12 p.m., members of the PIU team acting on information carried out a snap raid at the location. During the raid, the police said the prohibited weapon was found hidden under a cardboard box on the premises. It was seized and taken into police custody. No one was arrested in correction with the seizure, the police noted. 18-year-old charged after fatal stabbing in Manchester. The police have arrested and charged the 18-year-old teenager accused of fatally stabbing a 50-year-old man in Top Coffee Grove near Porus in Manchester on Saturday, August 31. The teenager, now identified as Sharon Rowe, a bartender of a community, reportedly fled the scene of the incident. Sources said the family fled their home in the area shortly after, as well as receiving threat. Roe is now charged with the murder of 50-year-old Fitzroy Wilson, a farmer from the community. Reports are that about 8 p.m., Roe and Wilson had an argument during which Roe used a knife to stab Wilson. He later collapsed while Roe fled the scene. Roe was later arrested by the police and reportedly confessed to the crime during an interview. Second man charged over shooting at week for grandmother of entertainer Christopher Martin. The police have charged a second man over the shooting at a week of reggae artist Christopher Martin's grandmother in Trotter Hill, St. Catherine. 20 year old bus conductor Jovan Doyle, otherwise called JT, is charged with seven counts of wounding with intent, unauthorized possession of a prohibited weapon, using a firearm to commit a felony, and gang related offenses. The police say Dyer, who is from the era where the incident happened, was charged after he turned himself in. He was one of several men named as persons of interest following the shooting. Their escort date is yet to be determined. Previously charged is 23-year-old construction worker Junior Coleman of Spanish Town St. Catherine.
Coleman was charged with multiple offenses including murder, one with intent, possession of a prohibited weapon, and gang-related activities. Seven people were injured in the August 24 attack, while 34-year-old O'Neill Spencer, Ella Staros, was fatally shot in a separate but related incident. Meanwhile, Commander of the St. Catherine North Police Acting Senior Superintendent Nick Hope Tom Nicholson, who confirmed death's arrest and charge, also reported that a 25% reduction in murders in the year since the start of the year. The division, he said, has recorded 59 murders when compared to 79 for the corresponding period last year. UHWI announces significant progress in enhancing capacity to address health threats. The University Hospital of the West Indies, UHWI, says it is pleased at the progress it has made in building capacity to respond to various health threats. UHWI Medical Chief of Staff Dr. Carl Bruce made this statement to reporters when questioned about the facility's ability to deal with an outbreak of Mpox virus if one should occur. There is no current case of Mpox in the country. Pointing to the country's history of handling health crises, Dr. Bruce said the hospital has made tremendous progress in supporting the public health system. So I'm, I'm very happy with the, the progress that has been made in terms of capacity building. I think if you look back at our history from 1948, you would see that every single time that there has been a crisis, that the University Hospital and the University of the West Indies have um, been up to it. And through the pandemic, you will recall that our Vice Chancellor described it as our finest hour based off the, the feedback we got from worldwide. So we're pretty sure that with our capacity, we will be able to continue the, the, the planning and the diagnostics and the treatments, etc. that are necessary to support the public health system. Four people, including two Haitians, arrested in relation to ganja seizure in Salem, St. Anne. Four people, including two Haitians, were arrested in relation to a ganja seizure in Salem, Renawebe. One of the Haitian nationals is a female. Police say at about 7 a.m., lawmen were carrying out a targeted raid at a premises in Salem when several crackers bags containing packages of what appeared to be ganja were found under a bed. A quantity of the marijuana byproduct, harshness, a point of sale machine, and counterfeit 500 U.S. were also found and seized. The four people were taken into police custody. I am sick and tired of this. Termites falling from rain-soaked ceiling are making life difficult for educators and pupils of Water Valley Primary School. I am sick and tired of this. Rain is now falling and the classrooms are getting wet, Principal Helsint Gill said as she pointed to a section of a grade 4 classroom. It is one of three infested by termites. The affected classrooms are used by students preparing to do the already stressful PEP examinations. The termites are falling on the teachers and students' heads and clothes, which has surely become uncomfortable for even them, stated Gail. She said the school struggled with this problem even before she became principal and it has remained unaddressed even though she had repeated the sort of from the Ministry of Education. A building officer came to the school before school restarted, but we were told that no one was granted to do such a project, stated Gail. Her plan is to have classes in the school's auditorium, but she knows that this is just a temporary fix to the huge problem. One parent whose child will move up to grade 4 next year is hoping the issues will be fixed by then. I hope he doesn't get a termite classroom. If he gets one, I will have to find a new school for him. I'm not going to let him stay under that condition, stated the woman, who asked not to be identified by name. She is worried that the relevant authorities have abandoned the school. Sometimes I wonder if the government treats this school so badly. This school they might eat down and leak and they can't get assistance. Big September morning and have to face this, this bad, a real nightmare this, she stated. The parent praises support provided by the PTA and Past Students Association, which she credited with most of the beautification of the school. She said they recently patched a section of the road leading to the school. Now, like Principal Gail, the concerned mother is waiting for the state to do the rest. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.